guys, today we are going to be reading Itzhak, a boy who loved the violin. The Pearlman's tiny apartment seemed ordinary. A single room walk up with just one window, looking out onto the traffic of downtown Tel Aviv. No bathroom of its own. Yet, a little kitchen radio transformed this simple home. Graceful classic symphonies, lively Kelsmer folk tunes, soulful colorful chants, cantorial chants, rich melodies, and vibrant rhythms filled this home and the ears and souls of the littlest Perlman, transforming baby Itzhak too. When Itzhak listened to his music, a vivid rainbow of colors played in his mind. Hues from dark green to red to yellow, music brought Itzhak intense joy and tears. Itzhak loved it. By three, Itzhak knew that he wanted more. He had to make music. Young Itzhak had already chosen the instrument whose magical sound he loved best. He begged his parents for a violin. But for an immigrant family whose dinner was often a piece of watermelon and some bread, music instruments were a luxury. Still, Itzhak pestered and pleaded. Finally, his parents bought him a toy violin. At first, little Itzhak laughed with delight, but he quickly recognized that his violin didn't sound like those of the master violins played. His music wasn't as clear as Jahaka Heifkin's and as intense as Isaac Stern's or as enchanting as Ida Hendel's. Disappointed, Itzhak gave it whack and threw it under his bed. Then the unthinkable happened. Polio swept through Israel. Forty-year-old Itzhak became infected with this deadly disease. He lay hospitalized, fighting for his life. After a few weeks, the doctor announced that Itzhak was going to live. But Itzhak's body was weak. He couldn't move his arms or legs. But at least he could go home. There were so many tasks to... Uh, relearn, raising his arms over his head, holding a book, grasping a pencil. The work was hard, slow, and painful. Other four-year-olds might have given up. They might have said, no, they might have stopped trying. But a steady melody played inside Itzhak, encouraging, energizing, and empowering him. A year of stretching, strengthening, and straightening paid off. Itzhak could move his hands and arms again, but his legs remained paralyzed. Itzhak would always need crutches or braces to walk. Crutches or not, Itzhak didn't just sit in his room. His family moved to the suburbs, enabling Itzhak to get to school on his own. They chose an apartment without stairs so that Itzhak could move around easily. Crutches even helped his soccer game. To Itzhak, these adjustments were no big deal. When you're four years old, you get used to things very, very quickly. Running around the block, riding a bicycle, jumping off a diving board. All these things Itzhak would never be able to do. But Itzhak made an extraordinary choice. He didn't become sad or angry. He knew the melody inside him gave him a different gift. Music got in his ears, gave him goosebumps, set him chills through his entire body. Recognizing his passion, Itzhak's parents bought him a new violin. Crutches meant Itzhak couldn't stand like most violinists. But Itzhak declared, I don't have to play it standing up. I can play it sitting down. A bigger challenge was his big fingers, fitting them into the small space between the strings. Still, he figured out where to place them. Itzhak began studying the violin with a strict and old-fashioned teacher. Do what I tell you. Don't ask any questions, she said. Itzhak 
had to practice for two or three hours every day, making his music filled Id Tak with joy. But practicing didn't. So Id Tak found some unusual ways to manage. Sometimes he would sneak outside, watching construction trucks pour concrete. Other times, he boing, 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 boinged his bow on the strings, only pretending to play. If his parents asked why the room was so quiet, Itzhak explained that he was uh, perfecting a new method, practicing inside of his head. Yet, young Itzhak developed exceptional skills, including his brilliantly bouncing spiccato, vivid, buried vibrato, speedy staccato strokes, playful pizzicato plucking, smooth, slow legato. It sucks. Secret? He talked to the music, imagining the personality of the piece, what it looked like, what it felt like, what it meant. His way of living, breathing, becoming the melody transformed his music into something extraordinary. At six, it's at six. Itzak was performing with his orchestra in Israel. By the age of ten, he was giving solo performances. Itzak's warmth, joy, and enthusiasm became well known. Some people doubted that the violinist could play well sitting down. Itzak knew he could. Later, he exclaimed, "I can walk very well." But when I'm on stage, I'm not on stage to do walking. I'm on the stage to play. Obstacles were ordinary things Itzhak just had to get used to. But the irresistible melodies vibrating inside of his mind propelled and fortified him. And so he, reused, he refused to give up. At 11, he, he wrote to the National Symphony Orchestra, the Israel Philharmonic. I hereby request that you give me an audition to play. I have the following pieces ready. Please answer me as soon as possible. Sincerely, Itzhak Perlman. Then came the extraordinary opportunity. The world famous, very, very variety television show host, Ed Sullivan whose show was watched by millions of families each week. He traveled to Israel. Mr. Sullivan was looking for some new acts. So, Itzhak auditioned. Itzhak later admitted that he played pretty well for Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan agreed. He invited Itzhak to come to the United States and perform on his show, knowing just four words of English. Mother, father, and good morning. Thirteen-year-old Itzhak boarded a plane, which his mother, for New York City. On November 2nd, 1958, Itzhak sat on the stage of the Ed Sullivan Theater, smiled his broad smile, propped his violin under his chin, and began to play. Watching the young, round-faced boy play, the audience became mesmerized. Within days, bags full of letters poured into the show, begging for Itzhak to perform again. His life would never again be ordinary. The end. Hope you guys enjoyed the book.